Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to be going over the replacement of the transmission cooler line assembly for the 2014 and newer GM truck and SUVs. Now one important thing to note is that there's actually four different part numbers depending on your year and transmission you have. So go ahead and follow the link in the description for the correct part replacement for your truck or SUV. Now one important thing to note is that GM has actually changed the design of this um, cooler line assembly to a revised updated design um, and they actually have gone away from the quick disconnects in the block right here. This block actually houses the thermostat for the transmission to regulate temperatures above 190 degrees. So if you have deleted the thermostat and you want to replace the lines because they're leaking, you're actually going to have to delete the thermostat in the new block because this does come with a thermostat and you can't simply just swap the lines. And ultimately, if you haven't heard of deleting the thermostat in the transmission cooler lines, um, basically it's going to allow your temperatures to be about 30 to 40 degrees lower depending on your load and exactly what you're doing. And it's also going to, you know, raise the lifespan of the transmission oil because you won't be reaching that 220, 230 degree mark uh, for the fluid. Now, if you're not familiar with deleting the thermostat, I actually have created a video uh, several months ago on how to delete the thermostat. Um, there's ultimately two ways to do it. In the first video I made, there's actually a way where you can install a plug, you uh, tap, you remove the thermostat, you tap, the, the block and you install a plug to get rid of that thermostat so you have a straight shot to the transmission cooler. Um, and But in this video I'm going to show you a little bit of an easier way to where we basically just turn the thermostat around and um, it will block the, the thermostat from um, recirculating oil and bypassing your cooler which is not what you want. So let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're gonna to need to get the job done. All right, so we're gonna need um, just some needle nose pliers, 3 8 ratchet. We're gonna need a pick, preferably a 90 degree pick. I'm um, gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket. And then if you are going to be deleting your thermostat, you're gonna need some snap ring pliers. Then also we're gonna get some fluid uh, that's gonna be leaking out as we remove the line assembly. So pick up, you know, about two quarts of dextron transmission fluid and a nice little pail or bucket to catch any running out and some rags to clean up the mess. And in this video I'm going to be using my little handy Milwaukee power ratchet. This is a nice fast tool makes it go by quick. Uh, only one bolt that we're going to need to remove but if you're doing a large job this really does help you out. Check out the link in the description of where you can purchase it for a pretty good price. Alright so here we have the block uh, inside a vise just to hold it. And now what we're going to do is take some needle nose pliers and we're going to move the snap ring that holds this little cap in just by compressing the snap ring and going up with it. It'll pop right up. Now sometimes this cap stays in, sometimes it just pops right up. Um, if you're having trouble having this cap pop up, just take some needle nose pliers. You'll see a couple O-rings right here. Now one thing that's really important is that we note the orientation of the springs and thermostat when we remove it. So as you can see, the heavy side of the thermostat is facing down. Here's your cap right here. We're gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna get some needle nose pliers and we're gonna remove the spring that's inside of there. To give you a little bit better idea, the spring sits inside of that hole, that small hole down there. And what we're gonna do to make sure that fluid is always flowing to our cooler um, and is not in bypass mode is we're gonna take our thermostat and we're gonna flip it upside down. So if you remember, we had heavy side when we removed it, heavy side was down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the thermostat, we're gonna drop it in, make sure it goes all the way into that hole. And once it's in, we can go ahead and put our spring inside of our cap right here. So we're gonna reverse the orientation of everything and we're gonna drop our cap back into uh, this block here. Now with our spring in our cap, quickly just put our cap back into the block and the spring will stay in place. Now we can take our retainer ring and push down the cap into its original position. You really want to verify that that clip is properly seated into the block. We definitely don't want that cap popping off or anything like that. So now that we've deleted the thermostat in our transmission cooler line assembly, we can go ahead and replace the unit which is leaking. 
So here we are underneath the driver's side of the transmission and the first thing that we're going to do is remove the old thermostat metering block from the transmission using a 13 millimeter socket. Now just simply push away and allow the lines to leak out. Now we can go ahead and take some needle nose pliers and remove some of the tabs that are connected to the brackets that hold our transmission cooler lines to the engine and to the transmission. Next on the side of the oil pan here, we're going to go ahead and just use our fingers and take these little clips out that hold the transmission line. It's just spring tension that holds these in. Now from here, the line's pretty much loose. The only thing that's holding the front part of the lines in are the retaining clips themselves. On the uh, driver's side, below the radiator, there's one retaining clip that we're gonna have to remove. And then this line goes to the driver's side, uh, the passenger side, and it goes all the way up next to the air box. So we'll have to remove the factory intake, um, or in this case, this truck has a colder intake, we'll remove the air box from that to gain access to the connector for this line. So here's the location down here where our transmission cooler goes into the driver's side lower radiator. Um, we're just going to remove this cap right here and that's going to expose a C-clip that we're going to need to remove in order to push this line out. Using a small pick I'm just going to get in there and, and, and pick it out. Be careful not to remove, uh, I mean uh, careful not to lose those as they're, they're pretty small and they drop really easily. All right, once that clip is removed, we can go ahead and just pull out our line. Now that we've gotten the driver's side removed, it's time to go to the passenger side. The passenger side actually um, is right down here. It's a little bit hard to see with the air box in the way. So if you have the stock air box, basically you're gonna have to remove both PCV lines on the passenger and driver's side. You have to remove the connection at the throttle body, and then you'll have to remove the upper air box and the lower air box and your mass airflow sensor connector here. To remove the connector, simply just pull up on the red part, squeeze the connector, and the connector should come right off. Now looking right here, here's where the transmission cooler line goes to the front and this is the connection that we're going to need to undo. Uh, take that little plastic dealie away and there's one more clip that we have to remove uh, in order to get this connection free. So now that we've got the old transmission cooler line assembly out of the vehicle, uh, this is the connection right here that was leaking as you could tell by the fluid. Let's go ahead using reverse procedures, throw in the new transmission cooler line. All right, so once the um, transmission lines are properly routed by the engine, and uh, engine oil pan, we can go ahead and throw our new thermostat a uh, little cooling block back onto the transmission and then we'll worry about the front lines.
quick little note is before we go ahead and put our new line back in, go ahead and take the clip and install it onto the connector. That way when we push the line in, it'll automatically snap and we'll be done with that side. Now it's important to give it a nice little tug just to make sure you're fully seated. And as you can see, this side is. So now that we got everything put back together, it's pretty much time to start the vehicle up, check for leaks, and check our transmission fluid. Should have lost about a quart, so expect the transmission to be a little bit low and add accordingly. Make sure the vehicle is in idle and at park and at operating temperature to get the correct level on your transmission dipstick. So hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. Make sure to check out the links in the description, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave something in the comment section. Thanks for again for uh, for watching guys and I'll see you next time.